For those of you who have class with me, uh, I'm going to spend a few minutes here today talking about ChatGPT and discussing a few search strategies that you might take into consideration when writing any kind of academic text. You might be writing a five paragraph essay, you might be writing a literature review for either thesis seminar or perhaps academic writing. And I think a lot of the strategies that we talk about here today uh, will help you in the brainstorming stage of your writing. So getting right into it here, uh, ChatGPT, which is what we're going to be talking a lot about today, is simply a fine-tuned, conversational, data-driven bot, basically, that allows for uh, generating human-like text responses based on a given prompt. So you can preside For those of you who have class with me today, I want to create a video discussing ChatGPT and providing a few strategies that you might employ whenever you're writing any kind of academic text. Maybe you're writing an academic text for a five paragraph essay. Maybe you're writing a, uh, an academic text for literature review for academic writing or perhaps developing or putting the final touches on a literature review for thesis seminar you might find some of the strategies that we talk about here today useful in brainstorming primarily coming up with some ideas that relate to a problem and or solution related to your topic so today we're going to talk about chad gpt and chad gpt basically is a fine-tuned conversational data driven bot essentially that's capable of generating human-like text responses to a given prompt so you can generate or come up with a question that you can pose to ChatGPT and it will give you a it will give you a response. Some responses are better than others. At the time of this recording, uh, we can be assured that ChatGPT is only going to continue to get better and be more uh, prevalent throughout all of the social media and uh, tech tools that we're currently using. I know uh, Microsoft has Copilot now integrated into their suite of services and now Jet, Chat GPT or GPT more generally is being integrated throughout their uh, suite of offerings. I know uh, Google is working on their own uh, AI uh, equivalent. But today we're going to talk about Chat GPT and I want to show you a couple of search results and uh, provide maybe a strategy or a couple of ways of approaching trying to narrow down a topic using AI. Now, I think it's important to mention before we get into ChatGPT that it's important to review the policy on plagiarism. Um, for our purposes, we want to be aware of the different types of plagiarism. We want to be familiar with the common forms of plagiarism. And we want to also recognize that AI has its place in generating ideas, but not necessarily the end product, not necessarily the text. So anytime you are writing a text, it needs, there needs to be a clear distinction as to which ideas or which sentences are your own versus which sentences are not your own. And that includes AI, the use of artificial intelligence when generating text is going to also fall under the category of plagiarism if it's not correctly cited. So do take a look at the 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 uh, the policy on plagiarism so that there are no issues uh, there. All right. So looking at ChatGPT, I want to provide a couple of examples of how you can go about maybe searching for some ideas when you're first starting to think about a topic. One of the most difficult things to do is to try to narrow it down, especially for a five paragraph es essay where you're, you want to limit the scope of your ideas so that it's most appropriate for a five paragraph essay. Essentially, you're developing three body paragraphs around a central thesis. So here I have an example. I have a search term and I want to share with you here, looking at my screen, some search results that were provided. Now, the search term I used was, what are three main reasons English language teachers should use cell phones in the English language learning classroom? 
Now, in this particular search, and I say this particular search because if you conduct the same search more than once, you're likely to get a variety of answers. So that in and of itself is another technique, just simply repeating the search and seeing what kind of results you get. But for this case, we have the following results the first time that I entered this search phrase. I, I was given the following three ideas. Number one, engagement. Number two, access to resources. And number three, personalization. Now here in this example, you'll see additional information was provided for each of these, providing a little bit more detail. But certainly at a glance, this might give you some ideas about in this case, three reasons that you might consider. Now, to take this a step further, let's say that I'm interested in engagement and I want to search, conduct a second search that's very similar, but now I want to focus only on engagement. I might include the following search term or the following uh, search phrase. What are three main reasons English language teachers should use cell phones to promote engagement in the English language classroom. So now I'm narrowing the scope to focus only on engagement. So here in this case, I get the following results. Interactive activities, collaborative learning, and immediate feedback. Again, each of these might be something worth exploring. Maybe this might help come up with some relatable search terms that I can uh, find articles to support some of these ideas. But let's say that I want to take it a step further and I want to focus only now on interactive activities. I could follow the same strategy here using a similar search phrase. What are three main reasons English language teachers should use cell phones to promote interactive activities in the English language learning classroom? Again, I have some results, gamification, multimedia, customization. Again, each of these key terms, uh, you're provided a little bit more information for each. Again, just to get some ideas and maybe some possible search terms that you can use to search online. Google Scholar, use the database here at the university, or you might use Semantic Scholar as well to find articles that are relevant to some of these topics that we're looking at here today. Let's take it a step further even, and let's say I want to focus just on gamification. So again, I have a search phrase. What are three ways English language teachers can gamify the English language learning classroom with interactive activities? Now, in this case, I am combining a few key points, interactive activities, gamification or gamify, and in this case, I have mm, changed a little bit the, the question from the reasons, asking about three main reasons, to three ways. Generally speaking, as you're thinking about finding or looking for search terms, think in terms of reasons or ways as a way to come up with three key points that are going to be appropriate for, let's say, a five-paragraph essay, where, again, each of those three key points will later be developed in three body paragraphs. So again, I have with this search term now, I have the following responses, incorporating competition, using rewards and making it fun. So here I've gone through, let's say one, two, three, four levels or four ways that I've tried to narrow down my scope or just brainstorm in different activities, each one providing really a lot of different directions that I could take my essay. And so the idea here is to, let's say, go through one, two, three, four levels or four different series of search terms. And again, each one of these I could simply replicate or duplicate just by doing a search a second time. I'm likely to find even additional responses. So that if you combine that technique with this layered approach, you're likely going to find a lot of potential topics. Now, remember that whenever you're doing your search term, always think in terms of problem and solution. Generally speaking, 
you're going to be asked to develop a problem in the introduction and the thesis and subsequent three body paragraphs are going to deal with a possible solution. It's always best to check with your instructor to make sure that uh, you're, you've got a clear understanding of whether or not your essay should be focusing on the problem or solution. In my case, in most cases where students are taking classes with me, if you are uh, signed up for a course with me, most in most cases we do want to offer possible solutions in our thesis statement and three-body paragraphs. Of course, relating it back to a problem that we develop in the introduction paragraph. So the results that I shared with you here are from this website, ChatGPT, the website chat.openai.com. The time of this recording, this is a free uh, version that we're, that I'm using. They do have a paid version. And I do believe that you need to sign up, you need to create an account in order to use the service. But certainly this is one one uh, aspect or one website that you can use to generate these kinds of responses. Now you can also sign up for Bing if you're using Microsoft Edge. You can use Bing and I have uh, just to experiment or to compare and contrast some of the search results. I use the first search phrase here. What are the three main reasons English language teachers should use cell phones in the English language learning classroom? And I conducted a search in two forms using Bing. Now Bing uses chat. I believe they use a GPT, which is uh, GPT-4 at the time of this recording. And I generated two different responses. One, selecting the medium length, and a second result, selecting the long length to compare and contrast a little bit using exactly the same search term to see what kind of results that I got. And in this case, I have copied and pasted those over to a Word document. The medium response is as follows. And you notice that it's a little bit more textual in the, in the sense that it's more uh, just written out as sentences. But it looks like here the first uh, key point, cell phones can help students use new vocabulary. The second point, cell phones can promote here or enable collaborative activities and cell phones can enrich the classroom activity through authentic language. So again, these are additional key terms here that you could use to further your search as you're looking for articles, trying to find the right combination of key terms to use, um, perhaps through a bullying search so that you can try to narrow down those articles, that, those search results, so that you're getting the most accurate results possible. Here's a longer response. And it is, in fact, it looks a little bit longer, although it's not all that much longer, in my view. Here are the results. Cell phones can be used for authentic and multimodal language resources. Cell phones can enable collaborative and creative language learning tasks. And cell phones can foster learner autonomy and lifelong learning. So notice in this case, each of the key points is present. There are basically two terms being presented, combining these. And what your decision, what you're going to need to decide on is when you're looking at these key points, make a determination whether or not those points are specific enough and appropriate for a single body paragraph. I, again, I'm thinking in terms of a, of a five paragraph essay. If you're writing a longer literature review, of course, you'll, make, you'll need to make decisions about how many paragraphs and, and what you're going to be discussing in each paragraph. And uh, it's, you're just taking this to a little bit larger scale. But one of the most difficult things to do also when writing a, an academic text is when you're writing a body paragraph, making sure that the topic sentence is not too specific, nor is it too general. Finding that sweet spot, so to speak, where the main idea that's being presented typically at the beginning of the body paragraph is appropriate enough to later provide details as to what it is, how it is, when it is, where it is, etc. And again, just trying not to do too much or speak too generally in terms of the uh, key points that are being presented as topic sentences. 
So again, what we're not going to do probably is copy and paste these as topic sentences. We're not going to be doing that, but we are going to be taking ideas from these results, doing our due diligence, finding articles online, coming up with our own original ideas for our topic sentences, which later will be developing evidence or providing evidence and an analysis with our own words and having some kind of linking sentence or summarizing sentence to conclude each body paragraph, making it very clear what ideas are being our, our, are our own, which ideas are original, and which ideas are coming from an outside source, which would require a citation. So here we saw two different, basically two different services, two different ways of, uh, two different sources for finding different results for our chat GPT or GPT in general using Bing search. And I hope this provides a way for you to go about finding and narrowing down your topic or finding topics that relate to your, your, uh, your essay that you want to write. And I think it, by using some of these search terms or these search strategies that I'm presenting here today, you'll get a lot of possible ideas that are uh, worth writing about. Always reflect on your personal experience as a teacher or a student thinking about specific problems that you have faced, that you've seen, that you've witnessed, that are of interest to you. You could also explore topics that are related to applied linguistics. Maybe you took some courses in the past on uh, general linguistics, psycholinguistics, social linguistics, discourse analysis, any of those topics also as it relates to the classroom experience might be something also that you that are worth exploring that are worth writing about. Now, um, just so you know, there are websites out there. Uh, GPT-0 is one of them that is setting out to detect uh, Chad GPT. Know that they're out there. Um, again, be very uh, responsible when you're using Chat, B uh, Chat GPT, anytime you're using AI to help with your writing. Use your own critical thinking, your own judgment in terms of the results that you're getting. Again, I'm proposing here that the search results that we're talking about, that I'm suggesting that you, that you use, are most appropriate in the brainstorming and general organization of your ideas as you're trying to narrow down your topic for your academic essay. So I hope this helps, guys. We'll be talking more about this in class. I wanted to provide this video to you as I have tried in the past to basically show or discuss this same thing uh, in class, but unfortunately uh, the technology didn't uh, allow that to happen. So hopefully this video will provide a little bit of uh, direction in terms of how you can use this tool for brainstorming and coming up with ideas for your academic text.